Expressions are going to be our next little section we're going to take care of along with equations. So a definition of expression is numbers, symbols, and operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication grouped together that show the value of something. So there are two types of expressions that you can have in math. You can have a numerical, which is numbers only, so 4 plus 3. You can have an algebraic, which is what we're moving into, and that is a plus 2, where the letter is the variable. So anytime that you have a letter in there, it's considered an algebraic expression for the problem. Then we also have what's called a statement, which is a sentence in math that asks you to set up an expression or an equation using words to mean a math operation. So this is your story problems, your word problems, your real world problems that you have that we really don't like, but we're going to have to work through them anyway. So we're going to try and help you with that. So some commonly used words that you're going to see within the sentence structure of statements in math. Again, you may want to uh, add to this as the year goes on because it's something that you'll use constantly. Um, so here is a section for addition. So the main one here is sum, but these other ones, and there's other ones that we can add to. So you may want to leave a little bit of space in here as we go. For subtraction, the main one is going to be difference. Um, for multiplication, uh, again, a variety of different ones that you can use, product being the main one. And then division, a little less, uh, but the big one being quotient here. Uh, for that one here. So division, subtraction have kind of the least amount, multiplication and addition have uh, the most. So that's a good start of a list that you can use in class on your notes. So let's write some. So in our first example it says when a number, and if we don't know what the number is that's where we're going to introduce the variable, is decreased by 24. Well decrease stands for subtraction so we're just going to have x minus 24. Uh, when a number is increased by 14, again a variable, increase, addition, the number at the end. The quotient of 18 and 9, quotient being division again, so you have two different ways that you can write it, 18 over 9 or 18 divided by 9. A number multiplied by 2, this would just simply be 2a, again we're trying to work you out of, especially with letters, the variables and numbers right next to each other means multiplication. So we don't need a dot, we don't need to use parentheses unless you're going to substitute in something for that letter. Uh, the last one here, the quotient of 9 times a number and 18. So quotient and times, so we have two parts of the problem here. So the, there's the product of 9 times, there's our quotient of division, uh, 18. So 9 times which is divided by 18 will give us the quotient of that. One of the biggest things to remember and be aware of is to read the problem through. You may have to read it two or three times to get this done. And then look for key words. The differences, the quotients, the multiply, the increase, the decrease, the times. Those are things that will stand out to you as we go through this uh, for this section. Moving on to equations, an equation is two things that are the same using mathematical symbols. Uh, so one of the things that's used in an equation is an equal sign. Uh, again, the part of the word is equa, comes from the word equal. Uh, so we're solving for the variable, so we have now something to solve for because we have two sides of the equation. To solve it, we must do the opposite operation to both sides. So again, it's a preview of what we're going to get into. So we're trying to balance things out here. Each side has to equal each other. For the word equals, these are some of the words that you'll see. The biggest one is going to be is, or the result is uh, for that. So three things that we can do with an equation. Uh, we can write them. We can write a statement for them. So we can be given an equation, and we have to write the sentence for it. Uh, we can solve for the variable, which is the biggest thing that we're going to do. And then three, justify an answer for it. So this is kind of the checking part of what we've done in the past. Now we're going to kind of incorporate all of this together into the problems. So as we look at some equations here, write an equation. When a number is increased by 14, the result is negative 35. So you have the equation here in red that looks like a plus 14, so a number increased by 14, the result is 
negative 35. So a lot of these just kind of can roll off the tongue as you, as you talk about them, but it's understanding what they're asking. So the second one, the product of a number and two is 24. So the product again means multiplying. Two times B equals 24. And again, we would solve for these variables. One number is three times another, and the sum of the two is 16. So this one's a little bit more complicated, so we're talking about basically two different numbers, one of them being x, the other one being three times that, which is equal to 16. So these are a little bit more involved, and we'll look at those as we go into class. So if we do the other direction where we've given the equation, now we have to write a sentence. So we can take this and write a statement for it. So the equation to a statement would read, a number increased by 14 is 44. And sometimes you want to keep them as basic as you can. A number multiplied by 10 is 30. So again, we're multiplying here is 30. The last one here, x minus 15 equals 30. A number decreased by 15 is 30. So we want to stay away from the general plus and minus stuff. We want to start using the increase by, decrease by, those types of things as we look at the equations that we're doing. The justifying part here is, you may just also see or hear the word satisfy. Um, it's kind of the checking part. In this case, they've given you a solution. They want to see if it actually works for the equation that they give you. So the sentence would read, is negative 7 a solution of the equation? So they've given you this equation. You're going to stick this number in for x. And again, we're going to use parentheses. We're going to simplify this side. And does this side equal this side? If they don't, the answer is no. This is not a solution for the equation because they have to be balanced or equal. So in this case, does negative 3 satisfy the solution? Well, here's our equation. We're going to put in a negative 3 here. Well, I have two signs, two negatives in front of my number, and anytime I have two signs, I have to simplify them. So that gives me a positive 3, so that's what gives me the 13. It does not equal 7, so there it is in the sense of it's no for the answer. Is 1 a solution of the following equation? So again, here's our equation. We insert our one for the letter that we're given. And yes, they both equal. So the answer is yes, number, the number one would be a solution. So the biggest thing in this when you're justifying it is the numbers must equal at the end when you finish the process. And we've kind of done some of this as the year gone on. Our last thing is we were asked to, we're going to be asked to evaluate. This is simply plugging in the numbers. And this is always using the parentheses. So it's kind of like the justification. You're plugging a number in for a letter. We want to use those parentheses because it really affects how the negatives work. So if I'm given this A minus B plus C, my A, B, and C numbers have been given here. I have a negative 8, a positive 10, a negative 1. So again, I want to simplify my signs if I need to. In some cases, you might have it in, both, in two situations or just one. So we would simplify down to our signs of negative 8, negative 10, negative 1, because an odd number of negatives gives us a negative, and we can get rid of the, the positives as well, will give us an answer of negative 19. In our other one, again, a, a minus B plus C, and this could range from a lot of different ones. We've done a lot of these, so that's why I'm not taking a lot of time. We've got our A, B, and C here, 10, 9, and 12. Again, we're going to simplify our signs. Odd number of negatives gives us the negative. So we've got 10, a negative 9, a negative 12. If we combine those left to right, we end up with a negative 11. So the biggest thing is you're going to look for a lot of key words in this section, and you're going to need to take your time. You cannot rush through these. You have to read the sentence that is given or the statement. And use your notes. Go back and look at that listing of it and add to it as the assignments get longer. So good luck with this. Take your notes and use them.